Okay, we all know what these are, so let's start off listing them. They're cameras, obviously, for those who don't know. <laughs> we'll start off with this one. This is a 1959 Walls Envoy 35mm professional rangefinder camera, which has a common R 7 element lens. You can see the display on the top, which is this thing right here. Shutter button. This is the film winder, and also there's a little counter that spins around. There's film in the camera, mind you, it's 35mm. Went out and bought three rolls of it. Good film, I already went through one roll. Gotta get it developed. This is a back, this is what for winding the film backwards when you're done with it. Pull up on this and it opens up the back. Don't want to do that, otherwise I'll ruin the film. You can see through the viewfinder. Has a lovely orange box, which you can sort of see. And then there's a mount for a flash, and then there's a plug. Very, very solid. The only damage is a dent there and another dent there, which you can't really see. I brought this one to school. It works very well. It's perfect. This is a 1954 Spartish full view. And if you look, you can see the shattered mirror, which I fixed. The original mirror. But now you can see it better. Anyway, it's shattered. Okay, this is for the shutter. And the up thing is just up for time flash, like if you're doing the dark room. And then there's regular film winding. It's one of those double lens reflex cameras. You can see my camera, which I'm using to record this with. It's sort of in the reflection, I guess. That is a 2008 Kodak Easy Share C813 Easy Share digital camera, which I use for all my videos. Very good. It's not blurry or anything, except when you try to zoom in on actual words and things. It's, not, it's better than some of the cameras I've seen. Oops. Don't cover the lens of the finger, cover over the recording light. There we go. Concord 110 EF uses 110 film. A um, little thing at the bottom right there, just adjusting it. Shut a button. The flash would work if I put batteries in it. Uses one of those exotic films which you can't buy anymore. Which I hate because of that. This is a Polaroid, happily, before the company has been turned into a mess of awfulness by Petters who bought it. Knocks off basically the most iconic camera and film in the world. And turns it into a digital uh, media company. And then they stop making film for the cameras. Oh well. See the impossible po project at savepolaroid.com. Anyway, this is a Supercolor 65CL. Mint in the box. Have the box, not going to show the box. Um, there's an adjustment here for if it's set in this position and everything's not obscured. It's for 4 feet to infinity and then it's 2 feet. The 2 feet to 4 feet. If I have the lens over, see, watch. See? There's the viewfinder lens, electronic flash. The little button underneath which you cannot see, my finger is just over. That is turns off the flash, I guess. If you press this button, you don't get the flash. Press the red button, you don't get the flash. Electric eye for brightness for the flash. You can see down the viewfinder. Then there's the little counter. And the strap is original. The box and the camera still came with the original questionnaire. 1974 Polaroid Electric Zip uses flash cubes. Has a working brightness control, for example. Wait for it, wait for it, wait for it, come on. See, there we go. Plung it out the window. Put it over there. Fix it a bit longer. You can see straight down the viewfinder, which has a little square then the 470's face. Cold clip 200. It's with both parts and still has the instructions in the back. Uses type 87 and 88 film. This camera is in working order except I have to clean the rollers, but they don't have any film. The two batteries reside down there. And you can see the, the shader work. Very neat looking camera. It looks a lot like a swinger or a color pack. And then there's the flash cube holder. Polaroid Spirit 600, which is very similar to the 65, except this one is much less complicated. I like this one a bit more than the other one, than the fully, what, the one that has everything, because I like it, look, it's looked better. Um, 
No adjustment, it just says light management system there. There's the brightness, darkness control, just like on the other one. There's no, nothing goes over the lens. Viewfinder, electric eye, electronic flash. This one has something different. The red light lights up when it's charging, green one comes on when it's not, and it's ready to fire. You can see down the viewfinder, it's exactly like the other one, except the rubber grommet's missing. Another t counter. This, both of the cameras were made in the United Kingdom and used 600 film. This is a 1960s Keystone 825EF electric eye flash camera, which uses 126 film, which is no longer made. I think they stopped making it in like 1999, 2006, I'm not sure. Inside, you can see the two batteries. You probably can't hear that on the camera for some reason. Uh, there's a little slider there. Sometimes the uh, shutter gets stuck. Obviously, it's not wor it's working now. The little radio light comes on when it uh, goes. And there's a test button on the top. See, it just came on. Poof. The flash is ultra huge and ultra powerful. Think if you take a picture of yourself in the mirror with a flash on, you get blinded. Within one flash. If you take more than one picture on the regular camera, it usually takes that long to get just a strong one. Very cool camera. Oh, yeah. The viewfinder angle. There's a little red dot. Not quite sure what that's for yet. Probably the same as on the other cameras. 1953 Ansco Sure Flash box camera. Camera very similar to a brownie. Has a good viewfinder, which isn't very useful because it's all blurry inside. Anyway, it still works. There's a shutter button. Winding key. Pull this out and we open it up. And then the exposed roll of 620 film comes out, even though it doesn't use 620 for some reason. It uses 120 film, which you can still buy because it's still manufactured in small quantities. New film goes here, old film is here. This is the take up here. Goes over this opening. And down at the end, you can see the little lens hole. Oh, yeah. I'm going to slap a film cartridge inside this one. I have a spare one left over that's been used. It was like that when I got it. This little guy pops up. 1987 or so Spectra. Spectra system. Has sonar guided automatic focus, which can be done in either feet or meters. Electronic eye flash, which is up here. Just flash. Let's get the viewfinder. Just let me that the, it's, it's open. Then there's the viewfinder. And watch this. After I cover up the. Uh, Come on. Show it. There should be a distance. Oh yeah, turn on the automatic. There we go. That's how far away the back wall is. 0.6 meters. It's really cool high tech. More high tech than a digital camera. Almost. Okay. That adjusts the computer for feet or meters. Chime. Timer. Sonar. Automatic focus. Flash. Brightness. Charging and ready. Where's the shutter? He didn't want to go. There's the little counter telling me that I have eight photos left. And there's charging and then ready light. Folds up all nice and neat. And then with eight minutes left, we come to the last camera because I had to rush everything so fast. The last one had to be two parts, and I just decided to redo it. My personal favorite. Most Polaroid people, and people who have them, know exactly what this is. For those who don't, it's a Polaroid SX70. I did not buy this camera. It was actually a gift from one of the kind of TAs who knew I collect these things, including the original case which is mint and unscathed. The camera has some minor scuff marks and things. It's brown and black. Another very well designed. This is probably one of the stylish and most stylish and ahead of its time cameras at the time. According to the ad that was on YouTube, over 200 transistors and as many resistors. The bellows are nice and mint, perfect condition. The instructions are still there. You can see the spheric lens which bounces off of everything inside the camera. Let's see if we can get it in. We're just seeing reflections. There we go. You can see the, the other Polaroid down there. Fully adjustable lens. Shutter button's there. Brightness, darkness, electric eye. 
No film, but they're going to start making it in 2010. Woohoo! Go to shapeforward.com. Then there's still some residue on the rollers. I showed this to a guy at school. He was amazed by the fact it did this. Let's say that again, folks. It just folds away. It's so awesome. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video of all my vintage cameras. Bye, all.